Okay, thank you all for being here today. Today we're gonna to be talking about what makes you stand out. Really, we're gonna talk about discovering what makes you unforgettable. So discovering what makes you unique above all else, that might just be the very thing that gets you noticed, the thing that gets you discovered, that puts you out in a light to do things that nobody else can do since you are so unique. So I know sometimes, sometimes we can get insecure maybe because of how we look or our style or how we do things, or maybe our talents is different than how others' talents are. You know, we have our own special way that we do things that might be weird or stand out. But I wanna encourage you today that even if you are different, put your work out there, put your creations out there. And even if it's in a way others don't relate to, you know, you are your own unique creation and you can't be afraid or held back by what other people might think or what they might say or what they might think about you. I know in certain cultures, it's not good to stand out. Now I live in America and standing out and being different is actually something that's celebrated, but in other countries, sometimes blending in is actually more celebrated than standing out. So for instance, um, there's a saying in Japan that says the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. So sometimes it can feel like risky to stand out or to put yourself out there in a different light. And I know it's like that different places you go, you know, for instance, certain restaurants have dress codes. I remember going to Las Vegas once and they wouldn't let my husband into this restaurant because he had jeans on, you know? So different restaurants, different things, different places have different criteria or want you to blend in or you have to wear a tie or you have to have a dinner jacket and you can't, and maybe that's, maybe you never wear that in real life. That's not you. And you have to blend into certain things. So not everybody is meant to be plain old vanilla right? Something that never gets noticed. Now, if that's who you truly are, you are plain vanilla, that's fine because um, you're being your true authentic self. But if everyone's trying to be plain vanilla when secretly they're trying to hide the fact that they really have mint chocolate chips in them, or you're trying to hide the fact that you're not just vanilla, you got sprinkles, rainbow sprinkles all over you. Or maybe you don't want people to know that you're Rocky Road and you actually have some nuts in you, right? Sorry for the ice cream analogy, but we don't just want to blend in and go unnoticed because God didn't call you to blend in. He called you to stand out. Matthew chapter 5 compares us to a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. So you're supposed to shine. You're supposed to not only shine in, in your countenance or sharing the gospel, but in all that you do, being who you truly are, sharing your God-given gifts and being creative, right? When, when you shine, despite what others may say, that's being you, that's being your true authentic self. And because you know what? We're always gonna have critics. Critics are always gonna be there. You could watch the most touching film on YouTube and it may have like, 100,000 likes, but it may have 150 thumbs down. Well, not everyone's going to get you, right? People are so busy trying to blend in and bend their voice to fit what others want that they end up losing themselves in the process. So you're selling out if you're not being your true authentic self. You've got to put yourself out there in a way where it makes you vulnerable it's gonna make you vulnerable sometimes. When you're being your own unique person that you were made to be, and there's no one else like you, yeah, sometimes you feel like, ooh, I don't, I don't wanna stick out, I just wanna blend in, I don't want people to see me. But you were meant to be seen, right? There's never gonna be another person like you. Throughout all history, there never was and there never will be. So we have to stop trying to be like others and emulate others. You have to be your own unique self. And that's what you're here for. You have your own unique thumbprint that no one else can copy. 
And I know sometimes we go, well, I just want to emulate what the successful people are doing, but their path isn't necessarily your path. So there was a period in my acting career where my own manager did not like the fact that I have two different colored eyes. And she forced me to wear colored contacts to make my eyes both match. She even called me a Barnum and Bailey circus freak and told me I was never gonna get work, um, you know, having two different colored eyes like I do. So maybe you are the type of person that likes certain different unique styles or going a different direction. Uh, you do things differently. You put your own spin on things. And that's why you can actually never truly be a copycat because even if you try to copy someone, you're going to put your own unique pizzazz on it, your own unique style. You're not going to be exactly doing what they're doing unless you're like a trained comedian who's learned to mimic, you know, everything outwardly. But even someone who, let's say they do voices and they do voices and this it's a voiceover actor and they're specifically paid to, let's say Denzel Washington does a movie and after the movie's done, they want to do a bunch of voiceover commercial spots, but it's not in his contract to do more of that stuff. So they hire a voice actor who sounds just like him and they get hired to sound like they're him in all the commercial spots. So I'm not talking about that. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about you, even if you're trying to be like others, you're never gonna truly be like anybody else because you have your own unique way of doing things. And that causes you to stand out and be different. So I know for me as an actress, those of you who may not know this, I live in LA and acting is my day job. I struggled to fit in for a long time because I felt like I was the square peg trying to fit into this round hole. And I couldn't be that Stepford wife, outwardly perfect robotic actor that they wanted for some roles. And I also couldn't be that Barbie doll, like ditzy, ditzy, dumb blonde. Like I would try, it just wouldn't feel like me. It wouldn't be authentic. Um, and as, even with, I think I'm a decent actor, but sometimes I just, I would not get those roles they would call me in for. And, you know, we all have our own unique, as much as actors like to say, oh, I can play every role. Really, really you can't. I mean, maybe there's a few actors that can, but you have a specialty. We all have a specialty. Maybe it's a certain type of art you do, you know, some people may say, oh, don't do that. You're going to fail. It's not going to work out. You can't make a living at that. And I remember seeing these videos about this guy who did artwork on the back of dirty windshields of people's cars. I know that sounds bizarre. And so he would see a, like a really dirty car that hadn't been washed in months and he would finger paint or I don't know if he used a brush. He would put artwork and create cool artwork on the back of people's dirty windshields. And, and I'm sure he probably had hundreds of people tell him, why would you do that? People, that's just gonna, they're gonna go through the car wash and your artwork's gonna be done, gone forever. Cause he would spend hours doing elaborate artwork on dirty windshields. And, but that actually ended up making him um, kind of a sensation on YouTube because he would then started to film um, the artwork he would do on people's dirty windshields. Sometimes what we feel called to do is not going to make sense to others. You know, so, but you still have to be yourself. You still have to be who you are. You know, if I wanted to be, you know, there's a lot of uh, actresses in Hollywood and they're like stick thin, right? They're just so tiny and it's tempt. It was tempting for me to think, well, if I just skip dinner every night, then I'll be thin like them. I, and I'm definitely not saying do that. You know, if you want to skip dinner, you talk to your doctor first and ask him. It's okay if I skip dinner, you know, you don't want to put your health at risk just to fit a certain size, right? And, but on that note, at the same time, you realize that you are, you are not your own, right? God made you and to honor God in all that you do, we should honor him with what we say. We should honor him with the things that we do. We should even honor God with what we put into our bodies, right? There's a scripture that says, 
do all things as unto the Lord. So that includes um, what we eat, what we drink, do all things as unto the Lord. So that's another thing to be mindful of. Are you treating your body, which is called the temple of God, as something holy? Or are you filling it up with junk food and fast food and pouring sodas down into your body? I know that's a little bit off topic, but we have to be mindful of who we are and whose we are. And I know it's tempting to think, oh, well, if I just had these certain clothes, if I just looked a certain way, then I would fit in. Because I remember in high school wanting to have all the name brands that the popular kids were wearing. Or, you know, maybe you want to be on the football team because all the cool jocks are on the football team and you want to fit in. But if you're not being who you truly are and you're only doing these things or wearing these things to try to be part of a crowd that doesn't like you for who you are and didn't like you until you started to do those things, they're probably not the kind of person you actually want to be around. So don't worry about fitting in or trying to get people to stuff you into a box that they made for you. It's a waste of time to try to fit into all the latest trends and fashions when you could use that time and money to be developing yourself, you know, paying to take classes, to get more skills, learning how to make that special mark on the world that, that you're going to leave doing the thing that only you can do. So tell me, what is it for you that's holding you back? What is it that you keep saying to yourself? What is it that you keep trying to fix? Or what is it, what is a mold that you're trying to fit in that wasn't meant for you to be in? Is it, you know, what others think of you? Is it trying to fit the mold of what made others be successful? So I have this, I have this girlfriend and she's been writing this screenplay to make her first film that she wants to star in. And, but she felt like she has to make a horror movie, but that's not even what she likes. She doesn't even watch horror movies, but because there's this like success formula in Hollywood that horror films get picked up and get distribution, even if they're lower budget, and even if they don't have a name in it. So name is in Hollywood, what they call someone who's not a celebrity or whose name you don't recognize. So because she's not a name, she thinks she has to make a horror film, which she doesn't even like, in order to break in to Hollywood. And it's worked for a lot of people. And if you're not famous, that's what a lot of people do is they make horror films. Because the people who watch horror films, they're not as picky. They just love the content and they don't need to have a star in it. So sometimes we model what's worked for others whether it's in Hollywood or at your job or at your school. But then we're not being authentic to ourselves, right? We're, we're trying to shove ourselves into a hole that we don't fit in. And we think it works and we think that's going to make us successful, but it doesn't fit who you really are. And we don't fit in those places that are too small for us. They are beneath you. You are too big for that. You are too big for the standards that have been foist on you. You're too big for what, for bending yourself to act how others think you should be. So now whether that's your voice, maybe you think your voice sounds funny or unusual, or maybe you have a different point of view on things. Whatever it is, that thing that makes you stick out, that you're trying to hide, trying to shove down, trying to not be that nail that sticks out because you don't want to get hammered down. Maybe there's things about you that people make fun of but you're so utterly unique. What if that thing that people are making fun of is the very thing that gets you noticed, that gets you discovered, that puts you out there in a light that nothing else can, that you haven't been able to do, that no one else can copy, that no one else can emulate. But when you try to be something, someone else, or do something someone else has done, it doesn't fit, it's not authentic, it comes off as a cheap knockoff. It's like, who are you really underneath there? I mean, I see what you're trying to do and I see who you're trying to be, but it doesn't seem authentic to you. So how are you different? Do you have a wild and wacky sense of humor? Do you have sarcasm and wit? Have people told you, keep your mouth closed because you're too outgoing, you're too boisterous. Have people been trying to shove you in a box that doesn't really fit you? something to take note of. 
who are you surrounding yourself with? You want to get around people who see you as the unique gift you are, who will help you to hone your unique gifts, who will encourage you and bring out the best in you. Not ones that are going to plant fear in you and say, oh, you shouldn't do this or that won't sell. Or you've got to do a horror film or you've got to be size four or you're not going to get booked or get distribution. You know, oh, you... Or if you're balding, oh, you've got to get you got to get hair plugs, or you're not going to get a good job, or no person's going to want to date you. Listen, God put these desires in your heart. So, if there's something you love, even if others say, "Oh, you shouldn't do that," or "You're not good at it," you know, I've experienced this in my life too. You're not you're not alone. I, as many of you know, I love poetry, but I had this mentor. And he told me that I couldn't read my poetry out loud. He said I was a good writer, but that I didn't know how to deliver my own poetry and how to say it properly. And I let that thwart me for years. I've, I've wanted to record these audiobooks. I have not recorded any audiobooks. And I know some of you guys have been asking, can I listen to the audiobook? I haven't recorded one because I let his comments affect me for many many years. So you know what? I'm going to change that. Hopefully in 2025, <laughs> hopefully I will record my first audiobook because I'm not scared anymore. I'm not like, oh, maybe he's right. Maybe I don't even know how to say my own stuff properly. And sometimes you just have to do what makes your heart sing. What is it that makes you passionate? What is that thing that burns inside you, but you're afraid to do it because you haven't seen it done before or not like you do it or you're afraid it's going to come out in a way that won't be received well. I encourage you, do that thing. Do that thing that only you can do. Do the thing that you're most afraid of doing. And guess what? The fear will start to dissipate. Be exactly who you are. And do you even know who you are? Or have you been so busy bending and trying to mold the world's standards that you have no clue who you are anymore. Let the world see what makes you unique and see what becomes of you from that. Because you never know that thing that makes you stand out, that might just be the very thing that makes you unforgettable in a good way. <laughs>